All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Trisha Phelps. I'm the CEO at Taste the Local Difference. Um, and I just want to kick off this, this whole segment by saying thank you for joining us as we show a couple uh, local friends how to use the new virtual uh, Sarah Hardy online marketplace. Um, so first, before we get started, I kind of want to um, do a few quick introductions so you're knowing who you're dealing with here. Um, let's start with, with Nick. Yeah, my name is Nick Viox. I work with the Downtown Development Authority, and we are the host for the Sarah Hardy Downtown Farmers Market and very excited about this opportunity of partnership with Taste Local Difference and the logistics side of things when it comes to how you'll get these fresh products from great farmers and vendors in our area in partnership with Seeds, who will be working on the logistics as well. And then I'm Beth Milligan. I'm the head writer for the Traverse City ticker here in Traverse City. Um, I've covered the farmer's market for many years, um, all different kinds of projects and, and things that have come out of the market. So I'm very familiar with the market and the DDA. Um, and I'm also a frequent customer of the market. And I'm Crystal Frost. I'm with WTCM Radio. And I really do have a face, but uh, <laughs> not great at technology, which I'm super excited to learn all the tutorials about how I can uh, take part in, in the downtown farmers market. Very excited. I'm a big fan of um, fresh food. And so glad to be here. Hi, my name is Becky Tranchel. I am the owner and chef of Rosenfern Cafe, a cafe here on the east side in Traverse City. And I'm just as enthusiastic to be still getting fresh local food out during such a time. Thanks, you guys. All right, um, to do all this, I need to share my screen with you. So let me do that real quickly. Can you all see it? Yes. Great. Um, so first, I want to show you around the site. This is the home page. Um, the the link to get to the market is this right up here. It's very long, um, as you can see, but you can really, really easily find it on the DDA's website, um, downtowntc.com or org. I'm sorry. No, it's dda.downtowntc.com. Perfect. There we go. Um, and you can also find it all over social right now, too. So um, shouldn't be difficult to find, but type that in if you're, you're looking for it. Um, the homepage has a lot of information on it right now because there is so much to share with everybody. Um, so don't be overwhelmed by that. Look for the big headers um, as you're having questions um, and know that even th there's even more information than this that you'll be getting as you become a customer and as you confirm orders and, and pickups are um, coming down the line. So this don't, don't fret um, with wondering what to do in terms of what's next, um, you'll be kind of fed that information throughout the process. So um, I want to share with you before we try to create an account, um, what the product list looks like. This is everything that's on the marketplace right now. So um, you'll notice that because we are not logged in as a customer, you don't see any prices. And that's intentional. You can't create you can't see the prices or um, start shopping until you have an account. So even if I were to try to add this to my account, it would say I need to log in first. So that's just an important piece to the whole process. There are prices, there is um, information to add to your cart, but you can't do that until you become a customer. So to create an account, the easiest way to do that is to, to go to this getting started um, section and register as a customer. You click that link there. And we're gonna use um, Becky as a guinea pig here. Is that your right email address, Beck? That is correct, yep. <laughs> and you can uh, ask me for the password later. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Super simple, like anything. Oh my goodness. Clearly, you need to add some uh, numbers and letters to this. Okay. 
There we go. All right. Um, so we'll get some, oops, we'll get some basic information in here. Um, super simple things, obviously. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna skip this step for the sake of time, actually. And we can just go into um, my own account, but but essentially it's that simple. You click on that that link um, to register as a customer, and then go through the process that quickly. Um, there is a little drop down menu here. Um, the only difference would be if you're an interested vendor who wants to sh sh to start selling on this site, you can create a profile that way, um, and we'll be notified of your interest. Um, but customers, it'll automatically be selected this way. So you'll register your account, agree to the terms of service, and it's that simple. You'll get a confirmation email that you've created an account. So we'll log into mine to make it quick and easy. And you can see here that um, I have already created an account. Um, and I've already actually shopped as well, because you can see my order confirmation information down here. Um, when you log in, though, we'll walk through the, the product list here. You can actually, you can actually um, shop by a whole bunch of different sort of attributes. So you could certainly scroll through the whole list here. Um, and you can see that they're separated by different categories, so vegetables versus microgreens versus herbs and value added products, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can also search products this way. Um, I could do mushrooms and find a product like that. Find all the, the mushrooms that are available um, and even compare the different um, producers of those products as well and, and the prices per pounds and, and such like that. So if I wanted to add something to my cart, um, I can just click that plus button. Um, if it has a drop down, that means there's multiple options. I could choose by the half pound or by the pound. Um, and I want to add a half pound of oyster mushrooms. It's that simple to add to your cart. Um, Earlier, earlier this weekend, when things started off, we had Saturday at noon is when, um, when the order period sort of kicks off. And up until I think midday yesterday, there was about 100 pounds of asparagus on the site, the first of our local Michigan um, asparagus to come, at least that I've seen. And so unfortunately, if you are, if you were to search it now, you're not going to find anything. But if you were to have been on here immediately when ordering started at noon on Saturday, you could have purchased that. Um, I want to say too that there's also a really fun way to search by producers. Um, so if you have, if you have producers you like to typically shop for or, or through, um, and you're often going to their booths specifically to find things, uh, this is a great way to, to do that. You can actually like select multiple ones um, that you're interested in. Oops, I have asparagus still selected. Um, you can search by multiple farms that you're interested in and bring all of their things into the, the fold here. Um, or you can search by just one and find all of that. So um, one of the, the other additions too is that you can make a you can make a producer a sort of favorite. Um, so if 19 rows, as everybody does, if I if I love their croissants and I want to uh, make sure that they're always on the top of my list, I can go to producers and click 19 rows and make them a favorite of mine. So the, the next thing I want to share is that um, simply by adding all those things to your cart, you would, you would go through like a typical, um, you know, ordering process, go through and enter your credit card information. Um, this is the, the sort of shopping 
cart area over here. Because I've confirmed my order, it already shows how many things are in there and that it's got a check mark. But otherwise, it would have the, a sort of shopping cart onto it. And you just type in your information there. It stores your credit card information. And you would click Confirm Order um, to confirm that order for this week. If you haven't confirmed your order and all of your things are just sitting in your cart, they're fair game for everybody else. So like that asparagus I was saying, um, if I hadn't confirmed my order earlier this weekend, um, I wouldn't have been able to, even if I had it in my cart, I wouldn't have um, sort of secured that, that asparagus. So that's an important piece of it. Um, the exciting thing though, as you may have already noticed, is that even though I confirmed my order for that asparagus and the, the many other things on here that I had to get my hands on, um, even though I confirmed that order already, I can still add things to it until Thursday at 10 a.m. when orders close. So this is the deadline that you have to have um, everything in by. But even if you've confirmed your order on Saturday, you know, at 1230, because you're an eager person who really wants that asparagus, um, you can add things to it all throughout the week. So um, if I if I was creating a recipe um, for the week and I had already confirmed my order, but I realized I needed basil for that recipe, I can just quickly add something to my cart and it's already a confirmed order. So that's um, you don't have to do anything more to that. Um, if I wanted to add a guilty pleasure for pickup, oops, I can quickly add a chocolate chip cookie right before closing ends or right before orders end. So um, super simple, really easy process. Again, if you haven't confirmed your order though, those things are still up for grabs. So that's a really important thing. As soon as you know you want something, I would confirm it and then you can keep adding to your order throughout the week. Hey, Trisha, are you able to remove items from a confirmed order? You are, yes. So if I click this um, sort of person over here, I can see my account and I can view my order. And if I no longer want it, um, I decided maybe that cookie, I'm not gonna have it anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna deprive myself of that delicious cookie. Um, I can update that quantity and it would be removed. And then it goes back basically into the, the sort of um, available product for everybody else. So if somebody, don't know why they would, but if somebody decided they didn't want that asparagus that they already have um, and like say, I have that on my list, right? If I, if I got rid of one of these, um, there would all of a sudden be one pound of asparagus available for the next person who, who sees that. Does that make sense? Yeah, so the quantities could potentially change during the week. I wondered if it was possible, like if farmers or vendors decided to add more items of things might become available later in the week or if it's all just upfront on Saturday. Um, they can add throughout the week. So if they see, for example, um, Brown's Poplar Ridge was the, was the farm that has this asparagus available right now. If they come in and they see that all of their asparagus has been sold, um, they can, and they have more, they can add to that quantity that they have available and then things will become available, yeah. Um, but I would, if, if you're looking for what's, um, what's new at the market, I would definitely check Saturday at noon because farmers know that they need to have all of their products updated by then. And then throughout the week, as you said, they can add um, quantities of things that may have sold out or that they weren't expecting to become available, but they are. Um, but Saturday at noon is when everything goes live for that next ordering period. Any other questions on the, um, the like shopping experience and how you, how you use that stuff? I do have a question. Um, since I would be buying for a restaurant, quantities would be higher. Mm -hmm. So if I needed five pounds of mushrooms rather than one pound, would you purchase five separate pounds or can, how do the quantities, are they just set and then you can add more than one? So 
If you want to add more than one and there isn't a drop down menu here, currently they've only selected the ability to have that one bag. So even if you wanted more than one bag of pea shoots, um, you could add multiple quantities of that. Um, okay. We'll currently have a price difference if you bought multiples. Sure. Um, if you look for one that has the drop down, you can see that some of them are offering price discounts on, on multiple options like that. And it kind of is a, a per product and per farm basis, whether they, they choose their prices and they choose um, the availability so they can make that type of choice um, on their own. And then as we sort of move forward, this being the first week that we're offering this, um, I think as we move forward, um, there may be a push to do more of that wholesale potential ordering with the farms as well. Um, so that's just something that can, it's definitely a um, capability of this software as well to be able to add, um, you know, the restauranter sort of login where you can get specific wholesale pricing um, through the farmer's market as well. So definitely options to come. But in the meantime, it's the drop down. Got it. Hey, Trisha, I'm curious because I think other people will be curious. The pricing is kind of funny. Like you're used to having clean like $3 at the market. So could you explain why it has like they all end in odd? Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. So um, the way that we, as I said, the farmers are adding in their pricing um, on their own for this marketplace, they update their inventory and quantities and they set their pricing. Um, but we do have a markup to cover the transaction fee. So that's just a credit card, a typical um, credit card transaction fee um, that we're covering to make sure uh, that, that this is a sustainable solution for the farmer's market. So that's what that, that's what those weird, yeah, six yeah. cents. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, I was curious too, or I thought maybe, because uh, I went through and placed my own order yesterday and it was really easy to use. And I think um, the only thing I was surprised by at the end was that there, um, and it was fine because I love the farmer's market, so I just ordered more, but there's a minimum uh, amount that you need to order, right? There is. There's a $20 minimum. And that's, again, just for the sake of um, all the, lo the logistics and the site in general. Um, it's just a, a, a minimum order requirement for customers just to make sure that um, all of those extra steps that we have to go to go through rather to, to make this happen um, are, are worth that $20. So yeah, thanks people, for having that. People could always just, you know, partner up with a friend and order if they needed to. Yeah. And they can also add as many, you know, cookies as they need. To <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Trisha, I had a question, um, you know, I, and maybe this is jumping the gun here, but uh, when people are ready to confirm and pay for their orders, I know in the past the farmer's market has accepted um, uh, SNAP benefits. Is that something that this is going to be able to do as well? Yeah, that's a great, um, great question. I'm going to see if I can view it in my section here real quickly. Um, Tricia, while you're looking for that, I'll sort of chime in and say that um, if you noticed on that first check it, checkout screen where you're creating your profile, there was like a tick box option to say whether or not you do use EBT or do not use EBT, Snap EBT. And if you do, then we would reach out to you and um, sort of teach you how best to use this platform for, um, for those food assistance programs. So our, our fervent hope is that you still can use this there, we will have its own checkout at the market for any food assistance program that includes EBT, Double Up Food Bucks, um, Project Fresh, Senior Project Fresh, Who Passes for Health, and Prescriptions for Health, which are the food assistance programs that we accept at the market. There's also been um, a new EBT program called um, PEBT or Pandemic EBT um, that is that has been launched by the state of Michigan as well, and we will also be accepting that. So for those of you that are using Double Up Food Bucks, um, I would like to let you know that that is specific to only fruits and vegetables. So keep that in mind when shopping because we will make sure that they are only applied for that. Um, and the limitations that it are for the other food assistance programs, we'll also be mindful of those. But um, do come with your card because we will need to charge it on site. We cannot do online payment for um, EBT at all. That's just not allowed at this time. So we, for the checkout options, you will have to be selecting something else and we will charge it on site. 
Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Nick. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, to his point, it's just, it's um, not possible in the state of Michigan to, to do EBT transactions online. So um, while it is an option, you can, um, I've, I've gotten into my account information here and the preferred um, payment method here is credit card. Oop. There is an option though to, um, as I'm checking out, there's an option to select food assistance programs as the, as the um, checkout method that I'm using. So um, folks who are planning to use their EBT card or any of those, uh, those benefits that Nick just mentioned can select that as their, their checkout method instead of credit card or check or cash. Um, and I guess that I think the, the next step to kind of go through is what to expect when we're at market, Nick. Um, so maybe you can walk through that with us and that'll kind of share some information too about what food assistance program users will need to do when they, when they get to site. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before we go there, I would like to say that there are some vendors that you probably are very familiar with and you're like, why aren't they on this platform? Um, all vendors of the Sarah Hardy Downtown Farmers Market have received the information and um, as many hands to hold them along the way in setting up their profiles. So it's just waiting on them and when their product is ready. Um, they are welcome to sign up. It is currently free for this month. So for those vendors to be on the platform and um, we hope that they, they take advantage of it. Um, this platform will be going on in perpetuity with the Sarah Hardy Farmers Market. So we plan on using this not just in the month of May, but throughout the rest of this season and for future seasons to come. Because um, we're already seeing a huge influx of customers and new customers and people, from what I'm hearing, people spending a little bit more than, they're, than they <laughs> otherwise would <laughs> because of the ease of the system, which I love hearing. So... Um, we did want to talk a little bit about what to expect when you come to the Sarah Hardy Downtown Farmers Market um, for this month. And what I will say is that it's going to be hard to tell you because we don't know what to expect either. Um, when we launched this this past Saturday at noon, within the first like 30 minutes or first hour, we had like $1,500 spent. Um, and now that has grown exponentially. We have over 300 orders um, that we have to prepare for everybody. We also have about over 30 vendors that are going to be participating on this first Saturday. So while we're trying to figure out these logistics, the logistics keep on changing for, for, <laughs> for every growing, growing variable. So as of right now, this is what we're looking at. Um, from this diagram that Trisha has shared up with us, we have like sort of a rough draft of what this what the market will be looking like that day of. If you look, um, this is a shot of lot B where the farmer's market traditionally is. That blue area that's highlighted is the um, birdhouse, what we fondly refer to as the birdhouse where EBT transactions and the seed staff is usually housed. That's where they are housed. And to the left is usually where Norte is dropped off. So just to sort of get your bearings as to where things are. Those pink tables are going to be where our vendors will be checking in. So vendors will pull in, they will drop off their products very early that morning. They will have their own assigned times. And then these orange tables here are going to be um, sort of a perimeter of where we will be sorting all of our stock. So this, this area may be expanded based off of the number of orders we've received. Um, so we may, we may venture out a little further, but this will hopefully be a tented area that we will be able to sort all the products in. And we do look at having the possibility of having a refrigerated truck there as well. So that way, anything like your cheeses or your meats will be able to stay fresh before you pick them up. These three blue tables over here, um, those are the vendor check-in stations. So, or the customer check-in stations, excuse me. So that is where you guys will be going as customers. One of those stations is meant specifically for cash, check, and um, food assistance program transactions. The other two are meant for the people that have already prepaid on their card. Now that red dot is where this line will be starting and we will be starting a social distancing line making sure that customers are six feet apart from one another. So when you go up to the red dot you'll be summoned forth by a staff member of Seeds or the DDA where we'll bring you forward to a table. We will ask for either your ID or your order confirmation, one or the other. Um, once we have received that 
one of the person at the table, there'll be two employees at every table. One of those employees will head back to this orange stock area, grab your product that was pre-sorted, bring it back to the table, and then we will go through that order with you to make sure that you have received everything in that order. Once that's been confirmed, you can bag it up in hopefully a bag that you've brought from home. If not, we will see what we can do. We are looking at boxes and other options, but bring a bag, everybody. <laughs> um, and we will put it in there and then send you on your way. It's as easy as that. Now, we are encouraging all customers to come with masks as well um, and really take their own safety precautions to make themselves feel comfortable, but also be mindful that that we want to make sure that the people around you feel comfortable in this sh new shopping experience that we're creating. One other thing that I'd like to point out is that when it comes to um, when you should be arriving to market, originally there were some times associated saying with the last name of, with the first letter of your last name is when you would have your assigned time. If that time does not work for you, you can certainly email us and we will, we will make some modifications, but I want you to keep an eye out in your emails because as I said, we have received over 300 um, orders right now and we're working on whether or not the logistics of fitting 300 people within three hours is actually safe um, or if it's possible. So we may have to expand those time periods and your assigned time may change from what is listed on there to what is in your email. What I will say, what you're getting in your email is what will be confirmed. So go off of that. Um, I just want to encourage all customers to be to be patient with us as we try and figure out this process for the first time. Um, and if you have any questions, like I'm, I'm responding from, from every corner of my house. <laughs> <laughs> and I assume, Nick, because you're not having the vendor set up like normally, there's going to be a lot more available parking on site than there normally would be. Absolutely. The only spaces that we're really taking up from parking um, are the ones that are right here in this archway where the pink tables are set up. And then we'll be blocking off a few of these in front of the um, where the light blue tables are here as well. So that way we can have the line sort of serpentine through there as, as well. Like more of this lot will be open down where like nine bean rows is traditionally set up. Certainly be uh, uh, more open than, than what we're familiar with. Great. And I, I think one more thing I want to mention, and you sort of touched on this, Nick, but is those email confirmations that folks will be getting. Mm -hmm. so, as I mentioned, when you create an account, you will get a, a email that, that confirms that you've created this account. When you place an order and you confirm that order, you'll also be getting a, um, a confirmation of that order that you've placed. Mm -hmm. And as you add more things to your cart, you won't be getting, if, if you say you add additional things in the time period, you won't get additional email confirmations for that unless you request them. But that's a really simple thing to do um, in your account summary as well. So um, if, you, if you do that, you can keep adding to um, your cart as you'd like. But then the next thing that'll happen is that um, right before pickup, you will be receiving a final order confirmation email um, and a pickup instruction. So like Nick was saying, even though um, these details right here um, are what we originally had planned for um, this first pickup period, that may change. And the information that you receive in your um, final order confirmation will be the correct information. So um, we'll make sure to update this as well at that time. Um, but in the meantime, just be looking out for that final order confirmation um, email for the specifics about your pickup this time around. Now, um, there were a few questions that I've received regarding like what happens if for some reason I'm running late that day or if I don't make my pickup time. So, um, we unfortunately cannot hold on to the stock for you. Um, all of these are, per for the most part, perishable items, and uh, we cannot stay in this lot all day. So we will stay there with your product as long as we can, holding on to it. But as soon as everything's torn down and taken off, then we will most likely be donating the your product to um, to the food pantry. Yeah. All right. Um, any. Other questions, guys? 
I just want to say that I followed along and I now have an account and I made my first order. And from the time I started ordering to the time that I paid, the basil was gone. So that is legit. You have to hurry up and confirm that yeah, order. Um, so that's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Crystal, I do have a um, secret hint for you that I added basil during that process. So I'll quickly unadd it. Nice. <laughs> 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 Oh, good to know. <laughs> I mean, that show goes to show there was only one left right now, right? Um, we had we had it like I said, asparagus. A hundred pounds of asparagus on Saturday were available. Now they're all gone. Um, we had a whole bunch of the fresh new cucumbers as well that were available. All those were gone. Um, so definitely, if you're if you're interested in seeing like what's new and seasonally available, I would check Saturday at noon. Um, but know that you have until Thursday at 10 a.m. To, to confirm everything. Hey, Trisha, I had one quick question, or for Nick or either of you. There are a lot of vendors who do CSA pickups at the market. Have you guys figured out how you're going to handle that this season? Yeah, for this time, I was I didn't want to step on Trisha's toes, sorry. Um, so for this time, um, we are not doing CSA at the at the market. Um, if the vendors have their own CSA, they can certainly coordinate with with their customers as to the best pickup, whether it's at their farm or whether it's at another location. But the market, um, as we're trying to figure out the logistics of this beast that we've created, uh, we're we're going to focus on our effort our efforts there. Um, we just want to make sure that we're not congregating too many people in one space, and we are afraid that that would just add add to it at this time. Sure. Well, I want to say kudos to you guys because getting a website like you've done up and running in such a short period of time and having such nice photos of all of the products and coordinating with all those different vendors and their pricing and quantities, and, and I found it very seamless and easy to walk through and place an order, so I give a huge kudo to your team because you pulled off, I think, a pretty big feat <laughs> in a short period of time. Yeah, it's, a, it's incredible. Easy to, uh, e even easy for me, who couldn't figure out how to turn on her um, <laughs> video, that's so that's saying a lot. Well, thank yeah. you. I want to agree too that I wouldn't, I, I might avoid the farmer's market on Saturdays just because it's a busy time for my restaurant, but this makes me even more eager to be able to put through my order during the week, put in a nugget of time to run over and pick it up. So I'm even more excited um, to use this system because I can probably get more local food into my place by having the convenience of all of this. That's great. Thank you. And yeah, I actually heard a similar sentiment from a, a, a friend who, um, you know, had too many, too many things to wrangle on a Saturday and um, didn't want to be bringing their kids and armloads of groceries and all of that um, on a Saturday and now can use this and do a quick little pickup as well. So I, mm -hmm. I, I think what's exciting about it is that it's um, certainly being done in response to this pandemic, but there's so many benefits and long lasting opportunities too with this online marketplace that are, you know, far into the future as well, so. Right, and I think a huge thank you to Taste Local Difference for um, putting this all together and really spearheading this effort. Um, we would not have been able to do it without you, so we, like, uh, hats off to you um, for all the coordination that you've done. And then thank you to, like, the community that's really come out in support for our vendors and our farmers um, during this time. We They need you. They really do, um, and so it, it just, it's just really, really exciting. Trisha and I were, as soon as it launched off on uh, this Saturday, we were like watching it like it was a sporting event. <laughs> like we were texting each other, I'm like, got another order. <laughs> another one just came in, it's up to this amount. Like we're, we're, we're very excited and um, we're fortunate to have a community that we do. Yeah, that's so true. And it was so exciting to see and keep refreshing the page and just, mm -hmm. yeah the turnout that fifteen hundred dollars we saw in the first 15 minutes it was just insane um and so exciting <laughs> and as you said just speaks volumes about our community and um what we'll do to turn out for for local food and ag which is great mm -hmm. so great. everybody who is excited about picking up their order on saturday um i just want to encourage you to keep spreading the word about this um and encourage you to like to tag us and share with us um, 
your thoughts about the process and about um, picking up your order on Saturday, you know, maybe do some social media unpacking of your box, whatever you, whatever you want to do to kind of spread the word and help us, um, help us, yeah, get the word out to other folks. Mm -hmm. That would be really helpful. Um, you can tag Taste the Local Difference or Sarah Hardy Farmers Market and, and both of those organizations in, in those posts. So will do. Any other questions before we send off? Nothing. Simple, yep. easy. I love it. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for, for joining us. Um, and yeah, shop local. This is the time. Um, folks mm -hmm. now more than ever. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, Trisha. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Bye.